Have you found yourself trying to count every calorie that you consume only to be disappointed when the scale just won't move? You're definitely not alone. We have been hearing for years that losing weight is all about calories in, calories out. But what if that's not the whole story? In this video, we are going to talk about why counting calories might not be the magic solution you have been searching for. We'll look at some surprising reasons why it doesn't always work and more importantly, what you should focus on instead to get real and long lasting results. By the end of this video, you'll have a new way of thinking about weight loss that could completely change how you look at food and your body. All right, the stage is set and we should start. But let's take a step back and think where the whole idea of calorie counting even came from. Back in the early 20th century, scientists were trying to figure out how our body uses energy. They discovered that everything we eat has a certain amount of energy associated with it, which is measured in calories. If you eat more calories than what your body needs, the excess energy gets stored as fat. And if you eat fewer calories, your body would burn that stored fat for energy. Simple mathematics. We got the concept of calories in, calories out. Calories in refers to the calories you consume from food and calories out is the amount of calories that your body burns through activities like walking, breathing, exercising and even sleeping. This formula ended up in popular diet plans, government health guidelines and even changed how we think about food. This formula still exists. We believe that if we stick to a certain number of calories, we are bound to lose weight. But we ignore an important concept. Our bodies are far more complex to be contained within a simple maths equation. Calorie counting worked for a lot of people at first. But over time, many noticed that even when they stuck to their limits, the long-term results just didn't happen. Some even gained weight back, even though they were eating the same number of calories. So what went wrong? The issue is that this method oversimplifies how our bodies really work. There are other factors like hormones, metabolism, and the quality of the food we eat. These all play a big role as well. We need to realize that metabolism isn't a one-size-fits-all thing. It's how our body turns food into energy and it's affected by things like age, genetics, muscle mass, and even stress. This means two people can eat the same number of calories, but their bodies might process those calories in totally different ways. For example, someone with a fast metabolism might burn through those calories quickly, while someone with a slower metabolism might store more of them as fat. This is one of the reasons why focusing only on calories doesn't always lead to the weight loss you want. Let's not forget about hormones either. One key hormone in weight management is insulin. Insulin helps control your blood sugar levels and when you eat certain foods, especially one high in sugar or refined carbs, your insulin levels spike. We will cover insulin in more details in the next section. Apart from this, there are other hormones involved too. For example, cortisol, which is called the stress hormone, then there is leptin, which tells your brain when you're full, and ghrelin, also known as the hunger hormone. Looking into how all these hormones affect your body would take a lot more time. So I'll plan another video to cover them in more detail. Take a pause here and subscribe to the channel to be notified of when these videos pop out. So, if counting calories isn't the answer, what should we focus on? The quality of your food matters way more than the quantity. Think about 200 calories of sugary snack versus 200 calories of a healthy balanced meal. The sugary snack will spike your blood sugar and insulin, causing a quick crash and making you hungry again soon. But a balanced meal with protein, healthy fats and fiber will keep you full and satisfied for much longer. Studies show that people who eat the same number of calories but focus on nutrient-dense foods like veggies, lean proteins and healthy fats tend to lose more weight and keep it off longer than those who eat processed, sugary foods, even if the calories are the same. Another study from the Journal of the American Medical Association found that people who focused on eating whole foods without stressing about calories lost more weight over a year than those who were strictly counting calories but ate more processed food. This shows that the quality of your food plays a huge role in your health and weight loss success. Let's turn our focus back to insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas that helps control the amount of sugar or glucose in your blood. When you eat especially foods high in carbs, your blood sugar levels rise. Insulin is released to move that sugar from your blood into your cells, where it can be used for energy or stored for later. Think of insulin as the traffic cop for sugar in your body, directing where it needs to go. But what happens when your insulin levels stay high all the time? When insulin is constantly elevated, your body goes into storage mode, meaning it's more likely to store fat rather than burn it. The problem is, it's not easy to burn that fat for energy later. 
one big issue with calorie counting is that it doesn't take insulin into account. You could be eating the same number of calories, but if those calories comes from food that spike your insulin, you're not setting yourself up for success. When your insulin is spiked, it tells your body to store fat, not burn it. So even if you are staying within your calorie limit, you might still be gaining weight or struggling to lose it because your body is in storage mode. That's why managing your insulin level is so important. It's not that how much you eat, but what you are eating and how it affects your hormones. So we have seen why calorie counting isn't always the magic solution for weight loss and how people have gotten better results by focusing on other things. But what are those other things? Let's see it now. First and foremost, it's about the quality of your food. Not all calories are the same, and that's where a lot of diets go wrong. Some foods will spike your blood sugar quickly, causing your insulin to rise. You'll get a burst of energy, but it won't last long. And soon you will be hungry again. On the other hand, certain types of food take longer to digest, keeping you fuller for longer. They help keep your blood sugar stable, which is exactly what you want. Another thing to focus on is how you feel when you eat. So many of us eat out of habit, boredom, or just because it's meal time, even when we are not really hungry. This is where mindful eating comes in. It means paying attention to your body signals, eating when you are truly hungry, and stopping when you are full. It does sound simple, but the truth is, we have lost touch with our body's natural hunger cues. A big reason for this is that we tend to eat while glued to Netflix or endlessly scrolling through Instagram reels. One of the best ways to avoid spikes in insulin is by eating balanced meals. A balanced meal includes a mix of protein, healthy fats, and fiber-rich carbohydrates like whole grains or vegetables. For example, a meal of sprouts, avocado, and roasted vegetables is a perfect example of a balanced plate. The protein from the sprouts help repair your muscles and keep you full, the healthy fats from the avocado provide long-lasting energy, and the fiber from the veggies keep your blood sugar stable. Compare that to a meal of just pasta, which would cause a big spike in your blood sugar, leaving you tired and hungry not long after. Another important point, make it a habit to understand the nutrients in a food item. Start thinking about food, what it actually does for your body. Ask yourself, what is this food giving me? Is it providing vitamins, minerals, and fiber to help me feel energized and strong? Or is it just empty calories that will leave me hungry and wanting more? When you focus on getting the right nutrients, the calorie count becomes a lot less important. This doesn't mean you have to be perfect and never have a treat. It's all about balance. But when most of your meals are made up of real, whole foods, you'll start seeing the results you want. Now that we have covered what to focus on instead of counting calories, how do you actually start making these changes? Start with small changes. You don't have to completely change your diet overnight. In fact, small, gradual changes work best for building lasting habits, like swap out processed foods. Start by replacing one processed snack a day with something whole and nutritious. Swap a bag of chips for some soaked nuts or a piece of fruit, for example. Add more veggies. Veggies are packed with nutrients and fiber that keep you full and energized. Try adding a handful of spinach to your smoothie or throwing some roasted veggies into your dinner. When it comes to meals, focus on balance. Include lean protein like tofu, beans, legumes or pulses, healthy fats like avocados or olive oil, and fiber from veggies or whole grains in every meal. You don't need to measure everything. Fill half your plate with veggies, one quarter with protein, and the rest with healthy carbs or fats. Next, how do we do mindful eating? A great way to start is by slowing down when you eat. It takes about 20 minutes for your brain to realize you're full. So if you eat too quickly, you might overeat without noticing. Try putting your fork down between bites or chewing your food for longer. Also, listen to hunger cues. Before grabbing a snack, ask yourself, am I really hungry or am I just bored, stressed or thirsty? If you're not truly really hungry, it's okay to save that food for later. Plus, avoid eating in front of the TV or while scrolling through your phone. When you're distracted, it's easy to eat more without even realizing it. One common mistake when trying to change eating habits is being too strict. Remember, it's okay to enjoy treats and your favorite foods now and then. It's all about balance. A good guideline is the 80-20 rule. Aim to eat nutritious, whole foods 80% of the time and enjoy less healthy options the other 20%. Whether it's dessert after dinner or a pizza night with friends, giving yourself some flexibility makes sticking to healthy habits easier without feeling deprived. Lastly, if you're planning a special meal or craving a treat, go for it. 
and enjoy it guilt free. Then just get back to your usual healthy habits. The key is finding a sustainable way of eating that works for you long term. So we have covered a lot in this video and hopefully you are living with a new way of thinking about weight loss and understanding why calorie counting isn't always the answer. Our bodies are way more complex than just calories in, calories out. Remember, this is a journey and if you slip up, that's totally fine. Just get back on track and keep moving forward. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment with your thoughts or any questions and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on living a healthier, happier life. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.